Hey guys, we're out here at Langdon Technical Technologies today in Arizona. We're gonna talk about how to lube these things, how to keep these guns up and running and make them last for years and years. Let's do it. Let's talk for a second. I brought uh, mine down about um, where to lube, what to lube, when to lube, what kind of lube. Um, you general. had this gun apart. Yeah, we had to take it apart a few times. Who? Uh, Your trigger pin's in backwards. Well, that's why we're here. <laughs> that's why we're here. Uh, wasn't Mickey the same one that beat it out last time? Too? He did. He beat it out and bur beat it out. bent the pin it's over. I was like, what? And how did he do beat that? It. I never, I never had it. another one apart. Yeah, because again, it's crappy and we looked at it. Ooh. Jeez. All right, well, that's why, that's why I brought it down here. I haven't shot it again since it was bat last apart, and I actually didn't want to. Yeah, it needs to be. We'll fix that. That's a pretty easy one. Um, so when it comes to cleaning, uh, I like, uh, it depends on what the purpose of the gun is, okay? If this is a gun that it's, I'm training with and it's not a gun I'm betting my life on or I'm shooting in a match or something like that, I'm not gonna clean it every time I shoot it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right? I'm gonna, uh, I joke a lot of times, I treat it like an old truck, uh, meaning I don't necessarily change the oil, I just add more oil to it. And the, the reasoning for that is a lot of people over clean their guns. As long as it's lubricated, it's probably going to be fine. Uh, the exceptions to that are if it's a gun I'm carrying, I want to get a, car a, gun, a carry gun I'm going to keep pretty damn clean. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to have a weird malfunction that happens because of, you know, a piece of dirt or something got in there that I was unaware of and caused the gun to malfunction. With so, same thing if I'm going to go shoot a match or something like that, I am going to keep uh, I'm going to get the gun really clean as well. The, the other exception to that is the environment. If you're somewhere where the gun gets rained on, or if you're out here, <coughs> excuse me, out here in the desert and like there's a sandstorm comes by and blows a bunch of sand bunch and of dirt into your gun, you want to take that gun apart and clean it really well because you want to get that water out of there if it's a rain and if it's a dust storm. If you just add oil to it, it's going to act like lapping compound. You know, now just you got grind parts grinding apart. stuff back and forth. So there are exceptions to that rule depending on the environment that you're in and you know what potentially could happen there. I just saw that as we're looking. Mm -hmm. So I put this gun back together wrong. I see it now. Which pretty easy fix. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not hard at all. No, matter of fact, matter of fact, let me show you the easy way. Super easy. I'm going to take the slide stop out. Okay. Easy day. Then I'm going to grab a punch that is going to act as a slave pin for me. All right. And I'm going to push it through, try to keep the, everything in there together. Uh, then I'm going to take another punch, come back in from the other direction because that's the direction I need it to go in. I want to mate those up. Nice. Easy, easy day. Perfect. <laughs> I'm glad I brought it. What would have happened? That uh, eventually that pin would have been walking out walk as you, out. you're shooting and yeah, pulling we'll, the trigger. It would have started walking out to yeah, the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, the spring there here. holds that pin in place. That would have been bad. I would have been like, that's how I got it. <laughs> Ernest sent it to me that way. <laughs> You might um, grab one of these paper towels. No, go ahead. Okay, so lube points on these 92s. Whether somebody's got your gun or somebody else's. Different, uh, on the 92s are a little bit different than a lot of guns out there because this is a you know, falling block locking system, not a John Browning tilting barrel uh, locking system. So there are some important locations that we want to lube. Obviously we want to lube the frame rails, but it's a little bit different than a lot of guns. Uh, the contact points on the frame rails are actually inside, not on the outside of the frame rail. So a lot of frame rails, let me get something to point with here. I'll beat up punch. Um, a lot of frame rail guns, you'll see that the contact point is actually the outside of the rail into here. And that may not necessarily, or is typically not the case. Typically the frame rail is actually contacting this part of the frame rail right here is contacting with the inside of the frame right there. The contact is typically, depends on the gun, right? They can vary, but this, this part of the slide is contacting the inside of the frame here, not the other way around. A lot of people think it's here, but 
Either way, depending on the gun, you can have uh, contact with both. But obviously our frame rails, that's kind of common sense. I don't see people not lubricating their frame rails if they're lubricating the gun. I see a lot of people that don't lubricate the gun at all. And I'm, the point is frame rails uh, need to be lubricated. The other thing that we see often uh, on 92s where people do not lubricate is they don't lubricate the, the, where the barrel goes down into the frame. When a 92 goes together, all right, there's another set of frame rails that the barrel is operating in. Uh, so when this gun's assembled, that barrel's going back and forth at a high rate of speed when we're shooting. So the barrel, when it's in the gun, is moving back and forth in these frame rails. So for example, this is the gun locked up. Uh, the gun, when the gun fires and the slide and everything comes to the rear, the lock and block actually stays upward until the plunger hits the frame and pushes that locking block down. The issue that I see is that people don't actually lubricate down inside these frame rails. We'll get a, a gun in that that rail is bone dry. And of course we've got a stain or a steel barrel riding in aluminum rails inside the frame. And from accuracy, longevity, all those other kind of things, if you're not lubricating down inside that frame, you're gonna wear the gun out much faster than it needs to and it's you're not optimizing you know the reliability of the gun either when it comes to the real reason we're using lubrication for two reasons a to make the gun last longer right to reduce wear and for reliability and it, it it's one of those things that kind of pisses me off I'm like, oh my gun doesn't need any lubrication i'm like oh, okay so you don't want it to last very long because <laughs> right. you know you're gonna drain you know, the oil out of your transmission the, or yes, truck or truck or yeah. your engine and see how long it's going to last i mean it's it's in there helping dissipate heat it's it, it's reducing friction when you reduce friction not only does that help with reliability but it's going to reduce the amount of wear that's going on the gun so if you're shooting the gun a lot you know you need to have a lubrication on it uh, so that's important obviously the frame rails, both the rails where the slide go and where the barrel goes needs lubrication. And then on a 92, obviously, we've got a locking block that's moving up and down. So the plunger needs a little bit of lube. The front and back side of the locking block needs lube. And then where the locking block actually contacts the slide, that needs lubrication as well. So the locking lugs on the, on the locking block need oil on them as well as well because there's a lot it's a high pressure point when that gun fires that locking block a lot of people don't really understand how a gun works but this is the way this gun works when the bullet is going out of the barrel the friction from the bullet and the pressure is trying to pull the barrel down range and then the pressure from the gas from the case is trying to push everything to the rear um, so there's a lot of pressure, significant amount of pressure on those locking lugs. So as soon as, as soon as that pressure drops, i.e. The, um, the bullet exits the muzzle, that pressure drops. And now there's enough energy still from in the, stored in the barrel, in that piece of brass to start driving all that to the rear. So the gun will cycle, will function, cock the hammer to the rear, do all the other things that it needs to do in the cycle of operation. Um, but it's, at the, when the gun fires, it's that bullet and the pressure from the bullet is keeping the slide locked in. In the case of a, uh, this particular system, if you're talking about a 380, we call a blowback operated gun, that's a different story, right? The spring pressure is what's keeping it in place. That's all the, also the reason why you can't crank the velocity up on a 380 round because the gun will unlock early and the case will mm -hmm, blow up. Mm -hmm. So for a 92, the main points of lube are Frame rails, okay? Um, both the frame rails where the slide goes and the frame rails where the barrel goes. We wanna lubricate those. And you can lubricate them on either one or both, whatever you wanna do. Um, you can lubricate them on the barrel and in the slide as well. But again, inside the frame rails here, but you wanna make sure that you're getting lubrication on this outside, not just on the inside in here, because we want that part lubricated because it does make contact with the frame in there. Um, the frame rails or the barrel rails that go into the frame, front and back of the lock and block, lock and block plunger, and then of course the lugs here for the lock and block. A little drop of lube on the recoil spring is not going to hurt anything. Either. So guys like to think about a smooth trigger. So the lower there, do you ever 
to, uh, should guys be dumping lubrication down into the trigger assembly? Not a not a ton. I mean, if it gets dry, we use we use grease on the trigger components. We I don't typically use them on the frame rails. I use oil on the frame rails and stuff because I don't want that to move around at a high rate of speed. Grease would be fine if you like it. It works great. Um, but we use TW25 on the trigger components, and one of the reasons we do that is it stays where I put it and it tends to last for a really long time. So that TW25 grease does a really good job, including it goes on the trigger pin, uh, the trigger bar pin, the hammer pin, the sear pin, all of those components I'm gonna put grease on. Cool. Uh, so if you, you get a trigger job from us, you're gonna see that grease inside. You're gonna be able to tell it was put in there when we put it together, because we put quite a bit of it in there. Guns need lubrication, you know, and if you don't think they need lubrication, you're uh, creating issues. I will add a couple of other things in there. Um, so I'm a fan of, uh, of synthetic oils and, and you know, like, you know, actual That's petroleum synthetic. distillates and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, this is a synthetic uh, grease, um, but it's not a, uh, it's extreme performance synthetic grease, but the I'm not a fan of like more of the biodegradable type stuff. And it, let me be specific, it's not anything, anything wrong with them. Uh, I've had some bad experiences with them. The bad experiences being that I've had them turn on guns where they start to go bad. And then I end up with a gun that's basically glued together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very difficult to get it clean. The other thing is if you're running those biodegradable oils on your gun, you're stuck to only having that on the gun. You can't be mixing oils. So if you start, putting normal oil in with some of the biodegradable oils, they'll react against each other and that biodegradable stuff will turn very quickly and start to gum the gun up and cause all kinds of problems. We see this a lot inside the kind of firing pin channels of the gun. Mm -hmm. So, cause that firing pin channel might meet a little bit of lube, but you don't need to be dumping oil in there. It's gonna create hydraulic effect problems, meaning that oil's gotta get out of the way when that firing pin's trying to move at a very rapid rate and now carbon and other stuff that comes back in there wants to stick and gum up and it's a difficult play thing to clean up without disassembling the gun. So, you know, be careful what you're cleaning the rest of the gun with. I'm a big fan of mineral spirits. We use it a ton here because it's inexpensive uh, and when it dries, it does dry things out, but it leaves like a crystalline finish on it. It doesn't dry it where like brake cleaner and things like that will completely Strip dry stuff. everything Strip off. every drip of oil back off of it. Uh, so I like mineral spirits from that standpoint. Um, I want people to stay away from bore solvents on their gun. Okay. And I'm not talking about in the bore, right? You're talking about bore solvents They'll being use like, used as oh, a general hoppies purpose. hoppies is great. Look at how it's cleaning my gun up and they get it all down inside the gun. Hoppies, the bore solvents are designed to break down carbon and lead and other stuff like that. Well, if there's any of that residue is inside the slide of the gun, it's gonna break that gun. I've taken guns apart that people have been cleaning with hoppies and they've got like nasty green. You know how brass turns when you're using hoppies and stuff and it'll have that green color to it? Mm -hmm. I've taken slides apart where the, the, the firing pin channel was just full of green boogers. Copper and that dissolved and ran dissolved down in there. and run in there because they're using bore solvent to clean out the, the slide of the gun or the frame of the gun and that's not what that's for. How about areas such as Let's take this back apart one more time. How about areas such as back here around the hammer? Should guys be taking their grips off and doing any kind of lube? Um, how, and then one other thing, spring replacement maintenance uh, on these guns. How often, which springs, and, and I'm sure you could talk in depth on that, mm -hmm. but like for example, on these G models, these decockers get worked a lot, a mm -hmm. uh, lot more than other other um, uh, hammer fired guns like me and you know, those things getting cranked all the time service life on those so uh to start with the first question you ask is should the guys take the guns apart and clean them well if you don't if you're not familiar with how to detail disassemble the gun, putting putting then, trigger pins in backwards right you beating them out with hammers with brute, force. Brute, force. Brute, brute force right um then maybe not but if you 
for example, if you're the kind of guy that bought and installed a trigger job in a bag in your gun, then you know how to take it apart. Mm -hmm. So if you want to take it apart and clean it and get everything nice and clean, then by all means. Does it need to be happen frequently? No. Probably, okay. you know, maybe every 10,000 rounds. Okay. You know, that kind of thing. You don't need to be de disassembling the frame May I? all the time. I've seen dudes... You know, drop oil and goop all around these, these Certain bits. mechanism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. bad idea? Probably not necessary. <clears throat> um, again, depending on the environment the gun was in. We'll kind of go back to what I said before. If you got, you know, crap down inside the frame for some reason, you took a spill with your holster on and you fell into a, you know, your kid's sand pit in the backyard, whatever. Then, That's yeah, a weird got, scenario. You know, you know, I'm just you know saying, you know, who knows? Uh, I'm trying to come up with a reason why normal people would be falling in a big pile of sand. But uh, you live train in, on the range. You live in Arizona. You're training in the dirt. Whatever it is, you take a fall. Gun takes a dive into a bunch of sand. I don't care what brand gun it is. You should detail. You should have the gun detailed, disassembled, and get all that crap out of there. Well, there's just good. there's just no way around that. Uh, but from a general use range gun, you probably shouldn't be adding or needing to add lubrication back into the fire control mechanism unless you've detailed, disassembled, cleaned everything really well, and then you're now reapplying uh, lubrication to it. So that would make sense. One thing I will point out, it depends on the manufacturer and the gun, but I have seen people cause problems. One of the things people love to do is take a, uh, like a magazine brush and then jam it in and through the gun. You can wreak havoc in certain guns because there's springs and levers and other stuff inside the frame of the gun that the magazine's not going to make contact with. And you start jamming brushes in there, you can, you know, you can unhook springs and cause problems. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would do that carefully with just like a toothbrush and an old t-shirt or something like that. Um, the other thing I'll mention too is um, if you are, uh, if you're cleaning the gun for the most part, you want to use something that's not going to fray a lot and i'll see people using like little tissues and stuff to try to clean and then we'll get a gun in that's having problems and there will be a chunk of toilet paper or tissue paper mm. down inside the gun somewhere and it's you know that's good that's going to call problems so using a durable cloth that's not going to fall apart when you're cleaning it using quality uh, Q-tips, maybe not the ones that you get to clean your ears out with, but the kind that are made to not fray and fall apart. Uh, that'd be probably a good idea versus just, you know, taking standard off the shelf Q-tips and jamming them down into the gun and then leaving cotton fuzz behind when it gets caught on something. So again, brand, it's kind of brand agnostic there. I don't really care what brand gun it is. You can cause problems with all of them if you start jamming you know, Q-tips and getting fuzz and stuff down inside the gun. Um, so keep, keep that kind of thing in mind. The other thing is I would highly recommend if you are cleaning the gun with like mineral spirits, uh, go back in if you can get a hold of some compressed air and use compressed air to kind of blow out the fire and pin channel underneath the extractor, stuff like that. One of the things you can do on a 92 is you can just take the extractor out, knock that pin out, take the extractor out, and then kind of clean. You'll see how dirty the fire and pin channel is because that will expose that fire and pin channel. Uh, and you can do that. Also, on the 92 series guns, uh, the fire and pin block, you can take that compressed air and put it in there. And when you've got mineral spirits or something in there and you hit that compressed air, you'll see all that gunk and crap start Come blowing, blowing out of there. Blowing out of that fire and pen block. I'm Where's, a big fan of the compressor. I've got one in yeah, the cleaning room for... It, is, uh, it makes a big difference in getting all the, the crap out of the gun. I would say your gun's... What has this gun got? Like 30 rounds since you cleaned it last? It's None. Yeah. <laughs> well, so it's just whatever's left over from... Yeah, I mean, I just did a, I did a pretty good clean before I brought it down here because I didn't want to hand you a dirty gun to play with. No, it looked good. It looked right. I mean, it hasn't been shot much. It's just whatever residuals left over. Recoil springs. You were asking about recoil springs? Yeah, so... Spring maintenance. Maintenance. So the recoil spring, the trigger return spring, and the trigger bar spring are the ones that wear out on the 92. The recoil spring depends on what you have in there. So if it's the factory one, 
Uh, the factory typically recommends, I think, a 5,000 round replacement cycle on the, the standard 92 spring. If it's a chrome silicone spring, you can easily get away with 20, I mean, 10,000 rounds on that chrome silicone spring. Okay. They last a lot longer and they hold up the heat better. The factory springs uh, can be more of an issue because they're typical, and this is across the board, almost every manufacturer uses music wire, regular music wire springs of, of different uh, makeups. Um, you got to remember that that recoil spring is sitting right underneath the barrel of the gun, so it gets hot and heat cycles affect how long springs last. Uh, chrome silicone springs, one of the reasons I'm a fan of them, not only are they more durable for more cycles, but they're way more resistant to heat, specifically the trigger return spring, which gets a lot of heat because it's right underneath the chamber, uh, and the recoil spring gets a lot of heat. So those two springs are the ones that you want to keep an eye on, and we, uh, all of our trigger jobs in the bags come with a chrome silicone. Do you guys have like spring? a preferred replacement spring? Like if, so if I've got the regular standard spring, you would suggest the um, chrome silicone spring. Yeah. So if I, like, if I called or emailed and I said, hey, I've got the um, LTT, the exact one in front of me, can you please send me a kit of springs like do you have that all in a package or is it something we, that's well, actually something that we cart? need to do it's on the list of things that we need to do we have the chrome the chrome silicone re trigger return spring as its own item we've got the recoil spring as its own item uh, and one of the reasons we do that is we have a uh, we have different weight springs mm -hmm. so now I've got to, if I'm gonna do a kit now I got to do a kit with this weight spring this weight spring this weight spring this weight spring. I just made myself you know 30 more SKUs. Sure, and, sure, sure, sure. We've already got 500 and something. So if a, dude's really got, if a dude's got like a 92 FS, just a standard bone stock gun, if they email or call you and say, hey, hook me up with the best spring kit, you're going to have questions. Mm -hmm. What poundages and such. That's correct. You can, yeah, yeah. you can steer them in the right direction and they can buy all that right through LTT. Correct. Oh, the other question you were uh, asking about is the... Uh, like the springs inside the slide and all that other kind of stuff. Right. Um, the only time I would replace those if I was doing like a top end rebuild on a gun that had like 10, 20,000 rounds on it and a guy just wanted to freshen it back up. I've never seen this decocking spring in these guns go. And okay. we've, you know, we've been, these things have been out for five or six years now and I've never seen one of them break. I've seen people install them wrong and, you know, crunch it or bend it. Uh, but I haven't seen one of them just snap off and break. Uh, same thing with the firing pin springs. I've never seen them break. I've seen firing pins break typically from, you know, just tons of use and dry fire. And that is a, that is a thing. So what I tell people, um, if it's a gun that I'm just training with, it's not really that big of a deal. Typically when the firing pins break on these, the guns will still work. You'll get occasional light strikes with it. And then you take the thing apart and you get a two piece firing pin now or a multi, yeah, yeah. multi piece firing pen. Uh, the tip doesn't break off and the gun go dead. I have not seen that one happen before. You guys keep picking up your blasters like this one mm -hmm. and you dry fire it. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend if somebody's going to dry fire all the time to put a snap cap in or who gives a shit? I, I don't. I never have. I, I know wear, you don't. I wear out. Uh, I wear out, um, I'd wear out a snap, as much as I dry fire, snap cap's gonna be dead and I'll be replacing them all the time. So if somebody's gonna dry fire a bunch and they own one of your guns, uh, spending five or 10 bucks in snap caps, who cares, just replace the parts sure. when it happens. Right, yep, replace the part when it happens or put the gun on a maintenance cycle and know that, hey, at 10,000 rounds, Way I'm just better. gonna put a, new firing pin i'm going to put you know i'm going to spend 20 bucks and or whatever on parts for the top end or i'm going to send it in and spend 100 130 bucks and have everything cleaned out and replaced and and you know all that stuff what do we charge for top end like 70 bucks 75 80 75 80 and then we take it all apart and put everything in there and you know check it all out and send it back out so you know that is a that is an easy way and a smart way to deal with that um I just did a video on that telling people put it on your calendar, just come up with a schedule either by round count or time because some people don't shoot enough, mm -hmm. but springs don't last forever. I mean, they do and they don't. If you're not using them, like you might as well still swap shit out if it's going to sit springs, in your... Springs wear out from cycle time, not from being compressed. So 
the the way you know that I was taught this years ago um, quality springs let me qualify that yeah. right if you've got a, a gun that's made overseas it doesn't have high quality springs in it and you leave the spring compressed yes that's gonna affect it but uh but a high quality spring like this 92 or it's like oh you want to let your slide go forward because you're gonna wear the recoil spring out it because it's compressed it's not gonna wear it out sure right? it's just compressed sure um, same thing with your magazine springs I mean if you've got high quality springs um, I know we did a we did a uh, one of the units I was in we had a go mags that were all set up fully loaded ready to rock uh, that had been that way for like three years and they're like, oh, we need to cycle through this. It's time. And pulled all those things out. And we went and had, you know, went and took them to the range with us. Everything worked. They fine. worked fine. They didn't have any problems at all. And those re those springs had been compressed for years. Yeah, you know, there's okay? people finding mags from like World War II era 30 carbines and that they, they still shoot. Work fine. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. yeah. So, but when they cycle, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. And the way I explain it to people, it's like when you take a uh, a paper clip, right? And you can bend it and straighten it out and it'll be fine. But if you straighten it out and you pull it back and bend it, mm -hmm. eventually it's going to uh, work harden and break. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. that's what happens. The same thing with the spring, it, it work hardens and it will eventually lose that tension that it needs from, from that same kind of thing. And again, a lot of that, especially in recoil springs, depending on where it is in the gun, a lot of that issue comes from heat. It's your, your heat saturating that thing, a recoil spring and a pistol, because it's sitting right underneath the barrel. It's getting a lot of heat. Yeah, heat kills everything. Pretty much. Except diamonds. Right. Well, heat and pressure. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in go straight to them, Langdon Tactical Technologies on the interwebs. You could also go through the link on carrytrainer.com. Support good companies, support good people, be good.